Here we return. The final... No, not... Uh, not the final yet, but the deciding game about who goes up 3-0 to zero between Yunnan and the 3CC. The Kevin Cruz cap uh, uh, Kevin Cruiser captains in round number three here. Map is one of my favorites in this game, or maybe my favorite map in the game. It's Avora, and we're hoping that game is loading up. Avora is a beautiful map. I have to rehost here. Hope all is fine. Jamming will only mask signatures in the same direction that jamming is coming from. Other sectors will be unaffected. Okay, here we're going. Finishing nameplates. Hoping everything is going fine. Hope someone just had a slight slit up. Yeah, waiting for other players. Here we go. Please. There we go. Avora. Four capture points. Big asteroids. Beautiful. Purple background. This is how I like my space. Pretty classic map. Bit asymmetrical, as obviously you don't have an E point around here. You only have the flank over here is more worthwhile than the other. But that means that C often is undefended and you can grab up C easily. But B and D are nearly above each other, so it had some nice asymmetrical gameplay that allows for interesting maneuvers like if you flank around with your whole fleet around c for example then you give up the points on the other side but maybe get a better position though often battles ensue between b and a or between b and d and there's also a lot of big space rocks around here i would say it's a rather balanced map but so maybe Bit less cover around here. Well, blue, the blue side is a bit annoying, but you can play around that. Like you also have good rock here. You have some good rocks down here. So, for sure, not a map that I would call it super one-sided. But none of the maps we will play today are that way. I would say Cicada, similar map in the end, though a bit more <laughs> horizontal. Not as many, like the, the three spots there are all laying on the same layer. And the, it only has three points. Here we go. Merlin, Spider, Hellhound, the ships we just saw. Big Pirate, the winner of the last bat big battleship battle. I mean, not no side was sunk, but it got in there at the right moment. Red Horse, what is the other ship inside bringing around? A uh, Eland Corvette. Two heavy cruisers, a beam and guns on each of them, I guess. Yeah, beam and two guns on each of them. No missiles or anything else, but two beams, already scary. Up here, a gun heavy cruiser. Two gun heavy cruisers, okay. So, X Forts for the win, it seems to be. X Forts for the win. Four heavy cruisers and one Corvette is what the blue team brings around. Let's see if this is the winning strategy. Gun wise, they are one. The two heavy cruisers of theirs are one below the one of the battleship. But with the other two guns, obviously they're they are equal. Beam wise, they're outnumbered by one. Or like they have they have 14, 14 big guns against eleven, but it's two beams against three beams. And obviously ship wise, it's also seven ships versus only five. So the capture potential is for sure bigger on the UNN side. Capture potential bigger here. Missile wise, only the couple of missiles, the couple of range missiles on the UNMC's fleet are around. 
Well, it's on the other side, there don't seem to be any. Maybe I missed some, but I'm pretty sure there were none. Yeah, these don't have any. Uh, no, these only seem to have defensive che uh, chefs and decoys. Fire control radar in the front as well. Bullseye radar there. No major e warfare. Really simple lead, it seems. All about the maneuvering. No flashy things, just big explosions and a big laser. To kill off the enemy. But positioning on this map is complex and important. Ooh, the red horse got spotted. That's not where you want to be spotted. Being hit by the enemy battleship is not what you want to have happen to your one fast ship. That goes down, then capturing points will become a chore for the blue team. For now, it's capturing the sea point, but if it can get killed off before getting away here, that would be quite brutal. A lot of hits coming on top of it, for sure. Systems, system failure achieved on some systems, but it's capturing sea for now. This is important. Red Horse kind of needs to survive here. Seems to have gotten out alive and with a... With a still running engine for now. Well, the first couple of rains coming down on enemy heavy cruisers. Anaconda... Re Repost missiles though coming around. Eating most of the missiles here. Point defense also shooting up active decoy and flares going up as well. Do I guess these anti-missile... Yeah, these anti-missile defenses were maybe more expensive than the missiles fired. Like this might have still been a good trade for the red team in this engagement. And red horse not getting out alive here. I, I doubt Red Horse will make it out alive here. This is a lot of fire coming down on it. And it seems to be pretty accurate as well. Yeah, you can't take salvos like this with a Corvette. That's not what these ships are built for. Okay, so far it's still somehow bur burning. I mean, it's Eland is dead. Everything else seems to be pretty dead as well. But it still seems to have an engine. That is quite key here. As this is the only fast way of capturing points for the blue team. Whereas the red team has three little corvettes flying around. So alpha point won't be something that red team access easily. Meanwhile, big pirate moving around. Yeah, there were over penetration on the red horse for sure. Might have even been HE shells. Like even HE shells might over penetrate against these. Not sure. See, there is some line of sight towards Alpha. But these ships will be behind the rock. Alpha is getting taken though. The big pirate getting into position to capture C. You want to engage at the same time. Like, both sides want to engage at the same time with all their firepower. So, maneuvering here is important. But red, most likely soon, will have three points captured. And then blue is the one that has to move somewhere else. Two heavy cruisers up top. The Prince Albert and Friedrich Karl. Getting into a spot where they can shoot onto sea, sp sea point. Maybe take a duel with the enemy battleship. Though, I'm not sure that would end well. We will see. Okay, they're already shooting. Meanwhile, missiles flying towards the Red Horse. One did hit. Red Horse still moving for now. And some heavy shots coming out of the Friedrich Karl towards the D point. Destroyers. 
all heavy cruisers actually able to fire onto these destroyers. These destroyers have to find a better spot to be around. The red horse getting lit up more as well. So even these shots here are penetrate, over penetrating partially. And there also seem to be AP shells. But not all of them. And yeah, here we go. Red horse now bites the dust. So no fast capturing for the team in blue anymore. The question is, can they take out some of these beam destroyers before they can get in out of line of sight? It, nope, seems to be the answer. All of these three beam destroyers still moving, still around, and the red horse taken out. With the big pirate moving into the sea point, and also moving into the line of sight of the Friedrich Karl and the Prince Albert. Al Adalbert, soon. Prince Adalbert, not Albert. Coming up over the asteroid now. And this will be interesting. Shots flying towards the spider. Spider being spotted is interesting. Wait, what the hell? Why? Okay. I have... No idea why they are moving so weirdly. <laughs> okay, these shots look weird. A new target has been acquired. Big pirate on the fire. Big pirate doesn't seem to have a line of sight. The other way around though. So it's not retaliating yet, but it got the C point. And three points versus one point is the big differentiator now. Tick is way faster for the red team. The blue team's slight advantage will be gone in no time. So blue has to do something. Has to either move towards B to at least neutralize it. Do that quickly. Or try to go for a killing blow on either of the enemy's fleet. What could happen here is, what I could see happen is these three uh, four light uh, heavy cruisers now trying to take out the battleship. And then these beam destroyers might be a bit out of position. They might be a bit out of position. They seem to try to move around. Maybe get up here from behind. But the question is, will they do that in time? If the heavy cruisers just all run towards the battleship. Battleship now firing back onto the opposing heavy cruisers. But has taken some hits for sure by now. And it's also not quite on target. Shooting into the night sky. Some spotter that can't give the enemy position would be helpful here right now. As it seems like radar-wise, the heavy cruisers outperform the battleship. Ooh, that was close, though. Beam destroyers below the rock, trying to go for position. Red side now has taken the advantage. 34 minutes remaining. 30 taken the seconds. 34 minutes and 30 minutes. Only 10 minutes played so far, but red side will build up the advantage faster and faster if these ships don't go for B point. They'll go bigger and bigger. Okay. Okay. Big pirate trying to move around. Roman blue, Kursk, Friedrich Karl, and Adalbert moving on the other side into position. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. The beam. I would have expected the beam destroyers to come around, but I guess they just don't want to take the fight directly here. I had to assess the enemy fleet at first as well. Another four exports move information. I would 
like to see the big pirate disengage. You don't want to fly towards them. Especially not when the Roman blue and the Kursk have beams. And if you lose the battleship here, you don't have a chance fighting these battle cruisers on their own with only beam destroyers. Like, you need to at least take out one of these, I would say, to then be able to make Ring Around the Rosie happen against them. Spider here. Caught out of position. Being hit up by the secondary guns here. More little guns peppering the spider. Is obviously not healthy. But what do you want to have happen? Spider trying desperately to maneuver out of the way. But way more important is the big pirate. Most likely getting caught here by some beams. That's really not what you want to have happen. Yunan, I think I'm not quite understanding what is happening right now. Not quite getting what target of the enemy is. Or maybe now, but that might be too late. I'm pretty sure Kursk already is in range. It should be less than 5,000 meters to get its beam turret on target, if necessary. And if able. So, yeah, Spider has to be careful. Even in Kursk coming around. First couple of shots flying towards the Kursk. Kursk not getting hit just yet, but has the beam. Okay, Roman Blue moves towards B. Spider might be dead in the water now. Yes, is dead in the water and will get killed off here. Why is there no sound? Oh, lol. Now there's sound again. Something weird happened there. Okay. Big pirate moving away. Rusting out. Yeah, up here. The spider is out. Meanwhile, the gold tail, the Erlene, and the noble arrow coming around again on the hunt, not going for alpha. The Hellhound maybe could try to do so, though. But the big pirate is getting swarmed. UN and Spider going nuclear, going down. <laughs> and... No Stu Wolf, it has actually quite the player base now. The latest patch did boost this game's player base by a good amount. And it had its highest player peak ever with the rework of the missiles. And I would expect it to go even higher in the future when more patches come around. For sure, doing pretty well though, lately. Okay, here we go. Gold Tail, Noble Arrow, and Co. going for B. But Big Pirate still getting hunted. Trying to disengage here. Trying to stay out of line. Could maybe catch up with the beam destroyers at the same time obviously have to be careful here against all the enemy guns to a 100 point advantage now for the team in red but blue is going for the c point and is also going for the hunt here i would dive away here if i would be unn but i'm not quite sure how much they know about the enemy's movement right now but the Kursk is scary. The two beam ships are really scary. And the destroyers still not around here to help out just yet. Hellhound moving towards Alpha. Capture another point. That would be really helpful. Roman Blue and Kursk moving around the spot here. 
Not pre-aiming the turrets is an issue here. Um... And here we go. Chip spotted again. Or it's rotating, but they have to rotate the longest possible way. 180 degrees rotation. And the beam is coming up. And that will be brutal if the other be beam destroyers can't come up in time. And I fear they might not be able to. Guns now on target. But the beams is what's really scary here. Roman Blue on the hunt as well. Yeah, the ship didn't disengage quickly enough, not far enough. This is going to ha haunt it now. Being caught out off position here. But at least more points most likely will be captured soon. Where are you going? Still towards B though. Not sure that's the right move. Playing for the points most likely is what's necessary here. Win this. Against this export fleet. Second beam now online as well. Turrets in the top not shooting. Only three turrets retaliating here. Well, it's the beam destroyers are completely out of position. This battleship didn't run enough. It's now, I guess, maybe where it wanted to be, but it should have been here earlier. The Kursk catching up to it so quickly was rough, and now all the battle. Uh, the bell cruisers, all the heavy cruisers coming around. Around to hit it. First, catching up as well. Staying in range for the beam. The enemy secured zone common. And it's Trife here. The Seems to be dead already. The enemy is securing zone box. So, with the four bell. Uh, yeah, if you could take out one here, that would be big, but I don't see that happening. The battleship also aiming desperately from one target to another, not staying on the same target all the time. Not quite sure why that is. Why so many re-aims? Instead of at least shooting with one target that you are at as much as possible. Might not be the perfect control on the turrets here as well. And that's a lot of beams. A lot of beam damage here. Battleships can tank a lot of damage, but not forever. Especially not against heavy damage output weapons like beams. Beams are pretty good against battleships. And this battleship is not defending itself well at all. Really bad play around the big pirate, I would say, this game. Not realizing what's happening to it fast enough. Though the point capturing part... Still going well, but the question is, do you want to go in with the beam destroyers right now? I feel like you kind of don't want to do that, but maybe you kind of have to. Uh, if getting one of these up could be good. But it seems a bit late to come around now, as I feel like the big pirate is about to go nuclear here. As I said, it's a battleship, but it's also taking a hell of a beating. One hell of a beating here. Beam Destroyers now, aiming up, the Friedrich Karl seems to be the perfect target right now. Coming around here. Where are the beams? Where are the beams? Are they not in range? I feel like they should be in range, right? Where are the beams? There are the beams. Okay. Beams aiming up. Beams hitting hard. And if you then could run and defend the advantage in points by just capturing with the two corvettes and so on, then that might work out. Still a couple of missiles coming out as well, but I don't think the British Cull is anywhere near dead just yet. And the beams not on target anymore, as the British Cull is maneuvering well. Other units also maneuvering well. And this battleship seems to be pretty out. The top turrets all out of action already. The bottom turret now as well. Yeah, this battleship is going to die. And you don't want to fly too far in there now. You want to try to keep this up. But really bad timing here. 
of the UNN fleet. Really good timing, really good formation of their enemies, the Kevin Cruiser captains doing a good job here. And now the UNN big pirate is giving the order to abandon ship as it took a heavy beating here. DPS wise for sure one of the scariest fleets in this matchup but that's also because it has to stay concentrated not the most maneuverable fleet and on their own they are beatable every single of these four ships so it's not like you can't split up these battle uh, these heavy cruisers easily but yeah the destroyers here came in way too late the big pirate did run way too late and this leaves the position in a pretty desperate one. Also, the Stefa S. Erlene should maybe separate itself by now. As I feel like you should split up now. You shouldn't keep the three destroyers around. You should split up at least the Erlene. And then maybe keep the three destroyers together to if the enemy split up splits up their heavy cruisers ambush them one after another damage on the enemy heavy cruisers most likely is relatively light and in a direct fight three heavy cruisers versus three destroyers obviously the victor is kind of clear so you have to be taking the perfect engagement here keeping around the rock maybe but i don't think that's how this fleet is maneuvering Staying in position. And once the curse comes around and can use its laser here, that's this is over. Like you the beams destroy these destroyers in no time. But this beam of the destroyer will do good damage. But they're not doing it quickly. Also, beam here already taken out. Instantly lost the beam here. And that's not a great start. Beams over here also seem to have rough time getting on. Why are they not firing yet? I don't quite get that part. Also, not sure if the destroyers are actually faster. Oh no! And once more, missiles fired at the wrong time. Okay, beams on target. Missiles fired when, the, when close to the rock. Yeah, the enemy. The Friedrich Karl taking heavy damage here. Three beams for sure. Not something you take lightly. But more things are coming up. Also the peppering gunshots don't do anything here to a ship like this. 20 minutes remain. But maybe they can take out enemy missiles that are just launching. So same as happening to the rains. Means getting peppered, and now some more reposts, some anacondas coming in. 20 minutes remaining now. First coming around though, coming up from up top, and the beams also now not on target at all. Did they lose line of sight? No, they're now going down onto the okay, Prince Albert. Took some damage, but now the Arbrild is under fire. I feel like fighting here was the totally wrong move. Like, maybe do a bit of damage, show that you are still around, st show that you still have a fighting force, make the enemy scared, but not actually fight here. Don't actually fight here. The rain's also all going wrong. Ah, some moving around. But the active decoy is working there. And the hub rail most likely soon to be out. These ships also losing their beams already. And this is going to end badly for the UNN. Because they're soon not going to have any ships with active weapon systems anymore. And then the four enemy battle uh, heavy cruisers can just split up, take all the points. And bring this home without the enemy taking any points. 
Yeah, C point is also not open. Roman blue now coming around. This should have been a defensive retreat, uh, like a defensive battle. Uh, active retreat permanently coming out if the enemy is out of position, maybe to hit them with the beams. But not taking a 1v1, like, or 3v3 fight here directly. That's not how you win with these this fleet at this stage of the game. And the point advantage is so large, so not playing around that seems like a weird choice to me. I mean, that's the, the honorable way of going down, but the game's objective is not to destroy all enemy ships. Keep as many points, get as many points as possible in the, within the time limit of 45 minutes. UNMC Harp Riled getting hit. Berlin coming on again. Uh, the captain, the cruise, uh, the cabin cruiser captains are the ones in blue. And the other one is the UNN. The red ones are the UNN. So, okay. This ship could capture C. Like, capturing the points still might be a way to victory here. With time limit in. But. I don't think so. Like, 16 minutes is still a lot of time. And yeah, these ships are hunted down now as well. Only one ship, and that can't capture points. No, no, no. 60 minutes should still be enough for the other team to capture all the points and then pick enough points up. A tick of 8 points per tick should be good. Should be good. Interesting game though. Like, really cool export usage. And they, you really can see the coordination there. In their ships. The enemy is securing zone boxer. This somehow still alive? Most likely will get shot at. The enemy is pushed off soon. Comet somehow gets captured at the moment. Kursk trying to maneuver around though. As this ship should just fly through and hope it captures it in time. So the Kursk took some damage as well. That was the one that got hit by the battleship. But yes, the battleship not doing the damage in the right amounts, not getting in the right position, and the destroyers then just coming in instead of running away again, just taking a fight that was lost from the get-go. At a stage where, as I said, point advantage was there for the red team. 15 minutes remaining. But yeah, here we go. Lemon Man surrendering. And Storm PM most likely soon as well. As these ships are done for. DGVP to the cabin cruiser captains. Taking the 1 0 victory here. And that means they are having their three victories under their belt. And the other team that has still can catch up is we eat missiles like rice, as they have two points as well. So if they win, they might have a chance of equalizing here. But it will be tough. It will be tough. Also, thanks for the follow, Light and Rod. Much appreciated. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to some nebulous. And, yeah, Nebula is a really good game. Really good game, I know. I love how it is coming together. I'm really looking forward to that strategic map thing. I'm looking forward to the two upcoming factions as well. Should be great. And, yeah, GGVP here. The big pirate not doing as well as last time. The four heavy cruisers really got on top of it well. And the beam ships did some damage this time. 
but not enough to take out either of these ships here in time. And that means that the Kevin Cruiser captains did get the victory here in this round.